talking today about 12th generation Intel Core processors and Intel vPro. Um, got this tagline here, navigating new features and tool requirements to unlock business platform potential because you got to have something flashy. Um, I'm Bernard Carter, uh, CTO at Now Micro. If you're not familiar with Now Micro, um, we help our customers navigate technology to the edge and beyond with purpose-built computing and manufacturing services. So this goes all the way from you know VAR, HP, Dell, Lenovo, uh, you know laptops, desktops, to embedded and edge AI type devices running digital signage and sort of these modern um, you know applications you see out in the world. Um, we've got a quick agenda here. Um, we're going to cut to the quick and sort of talk about why this is the topic. We will define a bunch of the technologies at play, um, go through some transition gotchas. Um, I got a demo with some hardware here. We'll pan over and actually see some real hardware. Um, I would note that I'm not going over speeds and feeds for the most part. So if you're interested in like, you know, exact number of core counts and the, you know, gigahertz and things like that. It's probably not today's presentation. Um, I'm also representing with less memes today. Received feedback, I should have less memes or more memes, either way, but we're going with less memes this time, more memes next time. Um, and, you know, the idea here is to give a good overview with some business cases for the 12th generation processors, the work you need to do to get them in your environment along with vPro, and also some slightly more depthful uh, technical stuff here. So this should be something for everyone. Um, and this will be recorded on YouTube later if you miss a piece. And obviously, if you have uh, a question you want to stump me with, I'll you know, obviously answer. So why is this topical? Um, we're talking about new stuff. Uh, new stuff comes out all the time, but it doesn't usually require uh, new OS versions. It doesn't usually require new manageability. Right, so our, our system agents, our activations, how we manage these systems in the field does have to be a little bit different. And Intel's also released new tiers of uh, Intel PV Pro in particular that can drive uh, some total cost of ownership uh, you know, down on systems. So they're addressing what we'd consider sort of a small medium business segment and some Chromebooks. And I'll go into what that exactly means, but there's all this new stuff and to have the new stuff, you need to prepare your environment for it. You need to have the OS, um, your tools, so on and so forth already. First, we're going to sort of define some of the terms we're talking about today and why we're talking about it. Um, you might have seen some technical articles, uh, you know, you know, Ars Technica, so on and so forth, talking about 13th generation Intel Core processors. The gaming focused processors were just released, I think, last week. Um, I actually picked one up over the weekend for my gaming system at home. We're talking about 12th generation Intel Core processors. These are available today in, you know, laptops, desktops, um, you know, gaming devices, you know, esports, whatnot. Um, it is uh, a big change versus the 11th generation processors. The biggest one is we now have a hybrid architecture. So we actually have two different kinds of CPU cores in the systems. They're called performance cores. Performance cores are similar to what you would have experienced in like 11th gen and older systems. And then we have efficiency cores, which are lower powered, lower clocked processors that are designed to sip power um, as they perform tasks. And because we have this hybrid architecture and these two kinds of processors, um, there's some addition, additional sort of performance that can be unlocked in these systems while having uh, quite a bit higher core counts. And I'll, I'll show some of those core counts later. Um, another huge difference is we're going from 14 nanometer to what Intel calls their Intel 7 fab, fab technology. That means all the little, the little transistors and things and features in the CPU are smaller. That also means typically it's more power efficient and they can pack more into a chip. Um, and this is the, you know, sort of the first time we've seen that across a whole generation of processors um, and is a, a pretty big change. Um, we're also seeing support for DDR5, right? So DDR4 is supported on this platform. DDR5 is as well. You have some choices based on, um, you know, manufacturers are making choices based on, you know, power consumption, um, you know, sort of where the, the landscape is as far as sourcing goes. But there are some options. Um, to, it would be one or the other. It would not be both on the same system. And then um, something I think people sort of miss is the huge amount of ex connectivity expansion 
that's in the 12th generation and newer platforms. Uh, we have PCIe 4, right? So we're doubling the amount of PCIe bandwidth versus 3. This matters for uh, gaming, uh, big digital signage, you know, stadium type stuff, AK resolution, rendering, AutoCAD, all those really graphic intensive type, type things. Th this matters for that. Uh, we also have Thunderbolt 4, right? So we're again doubling the bandwidth from 20 gigabits per second to 40 gigabits per second. And then Wi-Fi 6E, uh, and also uh, a pretty, also similar huge speed increase. So by moving to the new platform, you're getting a lot faster connectivity along with those processor improvements. So I talked about the new stuff, and I talked about it driving the need for change. And part of that need for change is the silicon support policy. Um, the silicon support policy uh, from Microsoft, I put a link at the bottom there. It drives the need for new images, right? So if you're using an older version of Windows 10 um, and you want to be able to use these hybrid uh, processors in a supported manner, you need a newer version of Windows, right? So um, the feature we're talking about is called Thread Director. So that's the hybrid aware scheduling that was uh, jointly developed with Intel and Microsoft. And there are minimum Microsoft Windows versions for that. So if your environment is running, um, you know, 1809 or, or you know, some of the older versions, you would not have this feature available. And, and even though it might run, it may not be running as fast as it can or the most efficient way it could. So when you're looking at your environment, you want to make sure you have images if they're Windows 10, 21H2 or newer. If you're uh, like an embedded customer running digital signage or something like that, you want to look at IoT Enterprise LTSC 2021 and the corresponding um, non IoT Enterprise LTSC, if you're a corporate environment using that, would be 21H2 or Windows 11. And again, uh, you know, there's a lot of scenarios where this stuff will run with older versions of Windows, but it would not be optimized and uh, would not know the difference between the types of cores and be able to schedule that efficiently, right? Um, one of the greatest examples would be sort of a typical office worker. So if I'm opening my laptop and I'm doing my normal office work where I open Excel, uh, maybe I have Outlook open, right? I'm not really using a lot of resources to do that. Um, with Thread Director and its awareness of the scheduling, it might schedule some of the really intensive, like the spreadsheet recalculation on a performance core, and then just the screen refresh on a on an efficiency core, right? We're sipping power by putting, uh, using things that need more power on the more powerful processors and getting the process done and, and over with. And then the sort of background tasks or things like that can run on the efficiency cores and use less power, uh, especially in a laptop device. So, having this window support is important. Um, other thing I talked about was Intel vPro. Um, I've probably given a handful of webinars on Intel vPro throughout the years. I like talking about it. Um, I think it's a really neat technology, but it is a basket of things, right? So it's not just one thing. It is a bunch of different features. I like to break it down into three pillars. Um, the three pillars would be Intel EMT, so that's how a lot of people would traditionally see Intel vPro. It's the remote management um, at a hardware level control of the system. Uh, then we also have CIRA, which is Client Initiated Remote Access. Um, that is the outbound secure tunnel that lets us manage those devices when they're off our premise. Um, you guys may have heard of, you know, recent events where people have emptied their offices and sent a lot of workers home. A lot of us are working hybrid now as we sort of, uh, you know, deal with COVID and, and other things over time. We cannot depend on our devices being in the office all the time, right? It's not, it's not nine to five, Monday through Friday, everybody's in the office. I manage the systems when they're here and when people leave, maybe they leave their, de people used to leave their desk, their desktops obviously on a desk because they're they're there, but people used to bring, leave their laptops at, on their desk at, at work too, right? And maybe they bring it home a couple times a year to work on the weekends, right? Now everybody brings their laptop home because they're probably working hybrid, right? And being able to manage those systems securely at a hardware level when they're off your premise is um, enabled through the CIRA technology. And then there's also um, security features. Um, the, the, the security features that are included with Intel vPro sort of you know, shifted over the years, but 
think of things that sort of empower the next generation of AI and sort of intelligent security defense. So there's some features that can help with um, ransomware, the silicon support, the silicon support for virtualization technologies that like, for example, Windows 11 is built on top of that makes that run more efficiently so that it can um, sort of monitor the system underlying the OS. So if you get an infection, you know, it can actually clean it. Um, there's a lot there um, and it's very future looking. Um, and I'll demo Intel AMT with the actual systems and dice in a few slides from here. So we do have new Intel vPro options on these 12th generation platforms. Um, I've gotten a few questions from people, uh, you know, customers and, and you know, salespeople inside Now Micro about what these things are. Um, really breaks down into three sort of new product announcements. One is vPro, uh, Intel vPro Enterprise. It's sort of labeling what we traditionally call vPro with a name, calling it Enterprise. Um, there actually are some substantial improvements in it. Um, I have a 12th generation uh, Dell laptop over here running vPro, um, actually essentials, but we'll see that there's uh, a significant amount of improvement in Wi-Fi manageability. So when the device is on Wi-Fi, I can still manage it at a hardware level. We also have vPro essentials. So this is the new tier with most of the same capabilities. It doesn't have the KVM, but it does have the hardware level power control, um, a bunch of the security features, as well as um, the Sierra technology. And I do have that in a laptop here. Um, and then we also have Intel vPro Enterprise for Chrome OS. So these are higher end uh, Chrome OS devices. So think if you're an educational institution and your students are running one to one Chromebooks, there are now Chromebooks available for administrators and teachers that have a little bit more muscle. Um, maybe, you know, be able to do interactive whiteboard things, so on and so forth. And they also have that enterprise manageability via vPro built in, which is not available previously. So um, definitely some options there if you're looking for higher end Chromebooks that you can manage like you manage normal devices at a hardware level, but also still obviously get the advantage of the Chrome OS and running the same OS across your fleet. Um, I talked about the silicon support policy driving OS changes. These, this new version of vPro that has come out on the 12th generation platform is also driving a changes in manageability tools. Um, one of the biggest ones is, I believe in 2021, Intel announced the end of life of Intel SES. Um, I completely am blanking on what SES stands for, but it's, it's basically, it was their uh, free suite to activate and manage vPro systems in enterprise environments. Um, we helped a few customers set it up. We've used it throughout the years. It is EOL and does not support 12th generation hardware. So if you're currently using SES in your environment to activate or manage vPro enabled systems, you would need to you know, look at future looking. What Intel is recommending as one of the future looking options is what they call Intel Endpoint Management Assistant, Intel Emma. Intel Emma, um, has quite a bit more features than SCS. It's still a server-based platform that contacts the systems, but there's also an agent that can be installed. Um, it is not 100% feature parity with SCS right now, but it will be hopefully next year. Um, and then we also have Now Micro Dice. Um, if you've seen me talk about Now Micro Dice throughout the years, it is our, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of things to us, but it's, it, it's, it's not only a portal inside Now Micro, but also a remote support tool. Um, that does have Intel vPro activation and uh, management support. And I'll actually be giving my demos with DICE because that's what I have set up and that's what I have managing these computers that are next to me. Um, there are other management tools, you know, there are, you know, like LabTech and others have um, Intel vPro stories. If you have a tool and you're using vPro in your environment, it's activated or you're planning on activating it, um, Definitely would want to talk to that vendor to see if they have support for child generation hardware. You should not assume it's there um, in all cases. So I talked about the three pillars that I consider in Intel vPro. One of them was Intel AMT, Active Management Technology. Um, underneath that, there's like a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to go too deep into all of this because I don't want everybody to fall asleep, but we're going to go through the features. 
Um, the biggest one is KVM. So this is keyboard video mouse, and this is hardware level access to the system. What that means is when I connect via KVM um, via Intel AMT, I'm actually seeing exactly what's coming out of the HDMI port, and I'm able to type and use a mouse as if I was on that system. This is important in scenarios where, say, the computer's blue screened, right? Um, maybe, maybe like a monitor behind me was blue screen running my digital signage or a dashboard that I have up for a sales group or an employee communication system. I would be able to actually see that it is blue screen, even though Windows is not operational, because we have that hardware level control that communicates without the OS's need to be present. I can manage that system. Um, there are all also watchdog timers, so that's our ability to set up something that sort of checks in periodically, and if it doesn't, we can like reboot the system, right? So again, think uh, I put a computer up in a very hard to get to place, like at an airport flight information board, or on the top of a windmill or something like that, or you know, deep down a well. Computers end up in a lot of strange places, and not all those places are very manageable today. Um, watchdog timer could let you say, hey, my, my software's running, and if my software's not running, reboot the system. And hopefully that resolves the system of it, the problem, and if it doesn't, then let's take some additional steps. Um, system defense is interesting because it is uh, the ability to filter at the hardware level our network communication that's entering the system. So for example, if I had a zero day, you're familiar with zero day vulnerability? Zero day vulnerability would be like a, unpatched vulnerability out in the wild, maybe being used by threat actors. If there's a zero day out there that can compromise my system over the network and people are going to the coffee shop and getting compromised and getting malware, or crypto lockers, or all, all those nasty things you can get on your computer, system defense would let you set up a policy to maybe block that traffic. So let's let's block uh, port 443 because I have something unintended running a web server on my system. I can actually block it at the hardware level. The OS never sees those packets. Um, we also have the ability to do some, you know, event pushes, uh, wake alarms, serial LAN, and, and we talked about Sierra enabling that remote um, network communication. So, um, I guess the same thing with more pictures. I, I wanted to break it down into actual scenarios because I always talk about this like high and lofty stuff. And then, well, what does it actually mean to me? You know, what am I getting out of this? It's not a set of like really sharp knives to cut tomatoes with. It's actually some things you can do with a computer. So we can see exactly what's being output from the integrated graphics. That's super important, especially in graphical applications for our computers, or if you, uh, you know, the computer's blue screened or otherwise inoperable. We need a remote power control. Um, we need a hardware inventory out of it, so we can actually see like how much RAM is installed, is the SSD being detected, things like that. Again, we can triage the system. We can also reboot to USB, um, PIXI, or the BIOS, and actually even access the BIOS remotely and change settings. So um, there's definitely scenarios where I've had customers save the day because they could access the BIOS and change a setting that they did not anticipate needing set in the field through Intel AMT. Um, and this would not be possible. And normally you'd have to have somebody find a mouse and a keyboard and connect it up to the code device and walk them through what you want to do or ship the system in, have somebody fix it or roll a truck and have somebody fix it. These are all very expensive things. They all involve downtime and sort of lessening customer perception. So there are some ways of calculating the value of these technologies. Um, Intel has uh, something called the Intel, it's a mouthful, the Intel vPro Platform Total Economic Impact Estimator. Um, if you Google that, you'll just you'll get a page and you fill out a form about how many systems you have, how often they break, um, a few other questions like that, and actually give you a hard number of how much money they think Intel vPro would save you if you had it on your systems that was activated and your help desk was trained to use it. So if you need, you know, sort of that ammunition of, can I save money? How much money can I save? There are ways of doing this. Uh, we can also talk about sort of the softer things, right? So um, remote triage would be another, the ability to remotely triage a system and resolve an issue on the first call has a benefit both to the perception of your help desk and support mechanism with your customers, and also obviously reduces their downtime and reduces costs that way, right? And then um, if you're an organization that has to roll out technicians or call somebody to do uh, you know, remote repairs or you know, pull systems, ship them, whatever that is, 
um, you know, how much does a truck roll cost you? And if you reduce those truck rolls, what would that look like? And uh, actually sort of go through this, you know, I slice it another way here. Um, again, we're building a case. Does this improve the user experience, right? If a user has a problem, can they call me and can I resolve the issue? Does it save time? Um, I talk to a lot of organizations that always are busy, hair on fire busy. Sometimes just saving time so that you can reinvest into other things is important, right? It's really, really, really hard to do your job properly when you have a dumpster fire happening in the corner, right? The smoke, the fire, the heat, and you're trying to get out that fire, and maybe you're not doing the other things that are more important, or maybe the things that you should be focusing on as part of your job, right? So how do we tamp down the fires and make some of these support uh, activities easier through hardware level control, you know, being able to remotely triage so that we can reinvest that time in sort of a virtuous cycle of continuous improvement, right? If I save five minutes here, I have five minutes to do something more important. Hopefully that saves me another five minutes down the line and suddenly I'm doing more things that are more important and impactful for my job. And then I have this whole like, paragraph here, right? But I mean, the idea is, is how do you quantify the cost savings of having technology that enables better support experiences? I talked about the Intel TCO calculator. Um, you can also, you know, do it the old way with the spreadsheet, right? So what percentage of support calls could I be resolved on the first call if I was able to see what was happening out of the back of the HDMI port or on the screen of the laptop? How much customer downtime could I prevent, whether that's my end users or like another organization that I have an SLA with? How much time could I save? And then would this allow me to securely help users as they travel or work at remote sites or, or hybrid, right? So people are traveling again, they're in another place. How do I support them in a secure manner that I trust and know was gonna work reliably when they're out in the field? Um, I always, uh, I always say usually, you know, like per perfection is the enemy of good enough, right? So one of the other objections I hear when we talk about Intel vPro is I don't have a lot of Intel vPro systems right now, but I want to start buying them. And they, you almost want to like wait three years or wait through a couple cycles and then activate it. There's value today in unlocking and discovering what you have. If only a portion of your fleet is, has this technology available you could start buying it and activate what you have and still realize the savings, right? So these calculations can still happen with a partial fleet. Um, you can just start buying capable hardware and enable along the way, right? Again, perfection is not the point. It's better than what you're doing right now. And I'd also point out the help is available, right? Like now micro, we through our consulting services help people. We have some other resources via Intel that we can bring to bear depending on the size of the organization. There is help available to get this stuff done. Um, you know, there's definitely, we've done a number of YouTube videos showing how to do the activation, how to use our tools to use this stuff, how to triage things. Um, there's even a video on YouTube of me blue screening a computer and like rebooting and fixing it in five minutes. There's lots, there's lots of help out there. You, get, you just gotta ask for it. Um, I think it's in everybody's best interest to sort of get this stuff activated, use it, and have better experiences for our users. Uh, oh, she's biting the computer. Um, so activation specifics. Um, I'm not gonna go into this too deep, but there are different ways of activating Intel vPro. They depend on sort of your needs and whatnot. It's definitely a conversation we could have. There's options. I mostly just wanted to have a lady biting a computer on the screen. So, okay. So, I got some demo hardware here. Are we doing good on time? Okay. Um, we're just gonna pan. You still see me? Okay. Awesome. Uh, so, first system I here. I actually don't have this plug in. It's an Intel Dragon Canyon system. This is an i9 uh, 12th generation processor uh, running Ubuntu Linux. And Ray kind of ran out of space to put screens up here, so I have to plug this one in. Um, we also have what's called an Intel compute element in a Fort Beach chassis. Um, the actual processor looks like this. So it's a little card with processor, RAM, and no SSD that goes inside of a larger chassis. Um, there's some really cool like refresh scenarios in the field you can do with it. Um, in this case, uh, I have a 12th generation processor in there. 
uh, with vPro. So that's the second one there. Um, let's see, we have a Dell Latitude uh, 5430. This is a laptop running vPro Essentials. So I had a lot of questions about vPro Essentials. Um, I was able to uh, obtain a Dell so I could demo and show you guys what the actual differences are and what you're getting and what you're not getting. And then last, we have a uh, NIC 12 uh, Wall Street Canyon. So this is a traditional four by four nut, little tiny computer. Um, and they all have uh, fairly similar-ish processors. I actually put the core counts in here. It's like the one speeds and feeds things I'm gonna do today. Um, so you look at this as eight performance cores, eight efficiency cores. Um, we have two performance cores, eight efficiency cores. And then we have, uh, I think, Four, Wall Street Canyons, four and eight. So four performance cores, eight efficiencies, and then um, two performance, eight efficiencies on this one. So you know, a little, there's a decent mix of sort of um, stipping power versus uh, uh, running the electric bill up. So. Uh, and then I'm going to demo today with our um, NumMicro Dice software. So NumMicro Dice. You are all there if you're interested in knowing more about that. Again, also some YouTube videos and webinars on that. Um, I might make some shorter videos on managing this stuff later. Um, but I'll be using dice for this. Ooh, and it's demo time. So I have these systems up in my um, Acme Corporation tenant. Oh, actually, leave them over there because I'm going to be doing stuff on the computers and you guys can see that happening. Gonna, just got to think this through. Um, so um, you can see here, uh, this top computer here is this Fort Beach system right here. Um, if I expand this here, I can see, I can connect to the software. Oh, I'm actually connecting on the AMT tab. So this is me connecting to this system at a hardware level without the OS's intervention. The AMT tab lets me see that I have the systems on right now. It is vPros activated. Um, I have some features here where I have like remote desktop. Um, maybe we'll do some things here. Um, I could actually remote desktop into it from here. Again, this is uh, this computer is in something called client control mode. So because it's in client control mode, I cannot see what's on the screen without the user of the device reading me this code, which is eight nine one two eight three eight nine one two eight. Three. Oops. Eight nine one two eight three. And since I now have connected that code that the user read to me, I'm able to connect into that system. It's actually kind of tiny here, but you can see. Um, the other cool thing here is I am notifying the user that I am connected to the system through this flashing, right? So I cannot connect to the system without you knowing. One, you gave me permission, right? Because you've read me the code, and two. You can see that I'm connected because we see this flashing around the screen. Um, if we look at these other features here, uh, I talked about the hardware. So again, I can get a hardware inventory of the system. That includes seeing things like the processor installed, the amount of memory, so on and so forth. Again, this is at a hardware level. So one of the um, things I typically talk about is triaging hardware, uh, hard drives going bad, right? So SSDs go bad on occasion. If you have a user that says um, non-bootable disk error or they're having some kind of weird boot issue where it's blue screen and whatnot, I could connect via uh, Intel AMT to the back end of the system and see if the hard drive is actually being detected. And since I do have that BIOS level control, I could also reboot into the BIOS on this system and see that the BIOS is detecting the hard drive on the screen as well, right? So I have some options to sort of triage this without actually having to be physically in front of the hardware, but knowing that I'm dealing with it at the hardware level. Um, I talked about, you know, some of these other things like, you know, internet settings, um, you know, watchdog stuff, so on and so forth. But so, you know, fairly interesting from that standpoint. Um, I'm going to switch tabs here to the KVM tab. I can do the same hardware connect here that I just did. Um, I've already uh, I just allowed it three minutes ago, so it's going to let me back in. And we can see that it says Intel AMT connected and my, sorry about my screen being a little small here. Uh, I have it zoomed in for the webinar. But again, I could, you know, triage the system, see what's going on, you know, load LinkedIn, I guess. We're not going to do that today. Oops. 
Um, we have some similar information from our um, Wall Street Canyon system. Uh, the more interesting one would be the VPro Essentials. So we're going to open this Dell Latitude here. Um, in DICE itself, I can obviously get the software-based information on the system. I can see that we're, you know, we're utilizing the drive, memory, so on and so forth. You can see, oops, um, you can see some other information here. But more interestingly, I go to the KVM tab. Notice I don't have Hardware Connect. So because this is vPro Essentials, I don't have the capability of remoting in and seeing what's on the screen and manipulating the, the mouse and keyboard of the system. So that's our key difference between uh, Intel vPro Enterprise and Intel vPro Essentials, right? We still are connected via Sierra. These systems are actually connected via Sierra out to a, a DICE hosted in the cloud on Azure. And then I'm connected to that, obviously, through this web portal here. So we do have a secure connection to these systems. I'm able to, uh, Go to this AMT tab and probably load some stuff here. We're doing this over wireless, so sometimes I have to click it twice. Um, but it looks like it's it's clicking. Over wireless is a tiny bit slower, but we can see that this is populating. We're, we should be able to get some hardware information. So over wireless, I'm able to connect at the hardware level to this laptop, even though I'm not able to see the remote desktop session. I can do things um, like review the hardware and go to the system status and do things like um, I can power cycle it. So we do that. The laptop just rebooted. Hopefully you guys saw that in the camera catch that. Awesome. Um, so I was able to at a power level, uh, hardware level without involving Windows at all, reset that system and reboot it, right? So vPro Essentials does have a ton of features. We just don't have that KVM feature there. Um, this does work, and obviously, since this is hardware level, this does work in non-Windows systems. So this Dragon Canyon that I have running Ubuntu, it does work in Linux, right? And this is not a Windows-specific piece of technology. Um, and then the other system I have here is the Intel NUC. I'll just um, connect to it, see what it says. You know, similar screen, um, very similar features. This is running uh, vPro Enterprise. Do you have any questions in the channel at all? Nothing? Okay. I am amazed. <laughs>